Hey guys, welcome to this free video on evaluating higher powers of imaginary numbers. We're going to look at things that look like this or like this. As a reminder, pause and try the examples when prompted, and there are always free guided notes available. So to start, I want to take a look at some powers of i. So first of all, what is i? I've explained this in other videos. You should feel comfortable with this before you get started. So i is just the square root of negative 1. So if I start investigating powers of this, so what would i squared be? Well, I would just square the square root of negative 1. So we've talked about this before in other videos. This actually just equals negative 1 itself. OK, so now what would i to the third be? Well, you could think of this then as just multiplying this previous power right by i again. So this is negative 1. So if I multiply this by um, i one more time, I will ultimately just get negative 1 times i. That's what I mean, right? I'm going to multiply this result by i again. So this just equals negative i. OK. And now if I do i to the fourth, well, now think about this. i to the third is negative i. So I want to multiply now negative i times another power of or times i again, like this. So what does this equal? This equals negative i squared. Well, what is negative i squared? Well, i squared is just negative 1, so this becomes negative 1 times negative 1. So this becomes negative 1 times negative 1, so this just ultimately equals 1. OK, and now if I go to i to the fifth, what do I get? Well, if I multiply my previous step, i to the fourth, that was just 1. If I multiply this by i, now I start back at i again. So I bring this up. Um, so maybe I'll just I'll summarize that over here. So we have i i squared equals negative 1, i cubed was negative i, i to the fourth was 1, and then i to the fifth went back to i. So if you look at this then, this actually is a little cycle here that will continue on. So if I went to something like say i to the sixth, well now I'm just going to start the pattern over again. So I, at i to the sixth, this will equal negative 1, i to the seventh will equal negative i, i to the eighth equals 1, and then we start the cycle over again. So this is kind of a special thing about i that the powers just repeat. So that's why we can evaluate really ridiculous powers of this. So let's take a look at how to do that then. So I want to evaluate i to the 15th. So the key thing I really want to think about here is I, I really want to leverage the fact that i squared equals negative 1. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite this particular power. So what is the maximum number of times that 2 will go into 15? 7 times, right? So this will be i squared to the 7th, and then there's like this extra power of i here, right? So confirm to yourself that this makes sense. 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1, that gets me back to 15. This is kind of the key thing you have to be able to do with these types of problems. And now, once you rewrite a problem like this, the rest of this falls in line pretty nicely, actually. So what is i squared? i squared, we just said, is negative 1. So this becomes negative 1 to the 7th times i. Now, if I take negative 1 to the 7th power, just basically, is this going to be positive or negative? Well, if since it's an odd power, this will stay negative. So this whole thing will just equal negative i. Ta-da! So this is kind of the idea. You want to figure out what is the maximum number of powers of 2 contained in your exponent and rewrite the expression like that. So let's do this again. So I've got i squared. So what is the maximum number of times that 2 will go into this? Well, it's 11 times, right? And it just goes in evenly this time. So I can actually rewrite this entire expression like this. And now, once again, I'll, I'll go back and, and use this fact. What is i squared? i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 11th is just going to equal negative 1. So here's what i to the 22nd actually equals. All right. So why don't you give these a try? Hit play when you're ready. OK, so same thing, right? So I've got i squared. So how many times does 2 go into 36? Well, it goes in 18 times. So now let's work this out. I know that i squared is negative 1. What will negative 1 to the 18th be? Well, it will just be 1. OK, cool. So that's the answer for that one. So let's do this again. OK, so i squared, so 2 
goes into 43, well that will go in evenly 21 times, but then it will have this extra power of i, right? So 2 times 21 is 42, plus 1 will give me 43. So you want to just confirm that before you keep going. All right, so now let's work this out. This becomes negative 1 to the 21st times i. So this will end up still being negative. So this whole thing will just equal negative i. Okay, cool. So I have three more of these if you want to give this a try again. Hit play when you're ready. So for this first one, so how many times will negative 1 evenly go into 52? Oops, what am I doing? I'm sorry. i squared, my bad. How many times will 2 evenly go into 52? Well, it will go in 26 times. So now i squared is negative 1. What is negative 1 to the 26? It's just positive 1. Okay, so let's do that again now for i to the 33rd. How many times will 2 evenly go into 32? It will evenly go in 16 times with a remainder of 1. So here's the setup here. So then i squared is negative 1. If I take that to the 16th, that'll be positive. So this whole thing will just equal i. Okay, so one more time. So now how many times will 2 evenly go into 25? It will evenly go in 12 times with a remainder of i. So this ends up being negative 1 to the 12th times i, and once again this equals i. And so that actually wraps up the video, not too long here. Um, so that kind of concludes my, my series on imaginary numbers. If you're trying to review anything else with imaginary numbers, I have links to the other videos in the comments. Thanks for watching.